Happy Monday to you, everyone, and also happy Labor Day. I hope you're enjoying this holiday weekend. Hope you're getting with family and friends. Just hopefully you're doing it very safely out there. And also, hope you're taking a little bit of time to do a little bit of dog training. I've got a viewer who's been doing a lot of dog training. She's been working on place and stay, but she's got a problem. Her dog won't remain in place or stay when she goes out of sight, which can be really annoying and really degrade the behavior, the use of it. My gosh, imagine. Okay, so you got company over at your house. Enjoying Labor Day weekend. Tell your dog, place. It does. Great job. But now you want to go to the kitchen, maybe get something to drink. Maybe you have to go to the bathroom. Maybe you want to walk out to the backyard real quick. There's a number of reasons why you may want to walk out of your dog's sight. And if your dog hops off a cot or breaks the stay every single time you do that, well, we, we got a problem here. That, that's annoying. And it can also be dangerous depending upon the setting in which the animal is doing place or stay. So she asked me, she goes, Brian, I'm, I'm doing everything. I watched your videos on place to stay. I've implemented everything that you've told me to do. And the dog does great while I'm in sight. But the second I step out of her sight, it's over. She's off the cot. She's breaking stay. And she's coming to me no matter where I go. She's trying to find me. What the heck am I doing wrong? Well, first of all, let me kind of address why, why possibly this dog is making those type of mistakes. Okay, there's many reasons why. We really need to kind of go over those because those will help guide us on our way to fixing those mistakes. The number one reason why a dog may make a lot of mistakes like that in place or stay is because they could be clueless. Meaning, uh, yeah, I kind of know place and I know stay, but I only know it under the conditions in which you're around. That's why I always tell people, practice the way you're really going to use it. You know, train like you fight and fight like you train. These people who stand there and stare at their dog like Clint Eastwood back in the old days going, go ahead, dog, get off that cot. Yeah, that's great, as long as you're standing like that when your company's over. Yeah, practice real life. So your dog may be clueless when it comes to the requirements to hold place and stay, even when you're out of sight. If you want a dog to be reliable in this performance of any behavior, that behavior must, listen to that word must, I didn't say possibly, should, could, no, must. You shall train that dog under the very conditions in which you will need that reliable response. So again, the dog simply may not know that it has to remain there uh, if you go out of sight. And that could be also compounded by the fact that maybe your timing's off a little bit, and I'll address that here in a second. But another reason why the dog may be breaking place or stay to come to you is because in its perception, which is always unique to the animal, it may feel that the benefit of going to you is greater than the cost of remaining on that cotter and that mat or doing stay. Yeah, everything. Everything is run through a cost-benefit analysis. And the benefit of coming to you can be actually better and greater than any cost that the animals incurred up to that point for breaking the behavior. And that leads me to the third one. And here's why that could occur. Because your dog may be afraid. Yeah, it may be afraid to be left by itself. So many times I deal with dogs who develop what's called abnormal SBAs, secure base attachments, meaning they've morphed from an animal who digs you to an animal that must have you. It's kind of like a built-in separation anxiety thing, except you haven't left the home, you just left the room. Uh, again, we have to watch out for that because if the animal is afraid, if it's afraid to be without you, and you're kind of going to get a little hint on that because it, those type of dogs are like Velcro. No matter where you go, they go. I don't care where it is. <laughs> Wherever you go, they're there. If you slam on the brakes too fast, they're going to get a flat nose because they're going to run right into you. They're always around you, and there's a sense of urgency to be around you all the time. And these are the dogs that will sometimes even attack other people and other dogs for trying to sit next to you, hug you, kiss you, or do anything because you are such a valuable resource. You keep me alive. You're that life ring in a turbulent ocean. So we have to resolve that because correcting the dog will only make this thing worse. 
We have to be very careful. We have to make sure we are not dealing with a developing or even established abnormal secure base attachment. Okay, so make sure we can rule that out. And if we can, let's get busy training this thing and make sure we get it done right. Okay, so train it. Here's what we're going to do. I got Captain on his place, Scott, here. Or I did. Please. Had a boy, buddy. Stay. So I'm going to do stay like normal. Okay, here's the difference. Here's some of the mistakes that people make. Start with place over stay. If you train place, use it to establish an out of sight reliability before you use stay. Place is far more reliable than stay. So use it first. So have the dog do place, tell it stay. Okay, then go out of sight, but don't go too far. That's the biggest mistake that people make in this. They have to go all the way across the living room through a couple of doors so that they're out of sight. No, you can simply lead your dog's sight. Go around the corner, that's what I'm doing here. You don't have to go very far. Have a long line on your dog initially so you can feel if the dog starts moving. You got a little tension on this, all of a sudden there's slack, the dog's probably moving. Later on, no tension. Later on, just have it on the ground, have your foot on it just for safety's sake. But don't go too far. Out of sight is exactly that. Out of sight. So you're taking care of that visual reference right there, that visual requirement. You are out of sight. Nothing said that you had to go halfway across the planet. Stay close by at first. Let them get used that they can do this thing, survive this thing, without you being right there where they can see you. Third thing, make noise while you're over here. Oh my gosh, so many times people are like, stay. They go around the corner. <sighs> okay. <laughs> if that's what you do when you go out of sight, you just go ahead and do that. Because now you, you're, you're fighting like you train and training like you fight. But most of us don't. We walk into the kitchen, we, we talk with someone. We're rattling around dishes, getting cups, filling them up with ice, pouring a drink. We're going in the bathroom, toilets are flushing. We're slamming doors. We're doing all sorts of stuff. We're going to the front door, which happens to be not where the place Todd is. It's way down the hallway. Turn right and go turn left. Yeah, we're talking to people. We're doing stuff. So again, if you practice like this, then don't expect your dog to hold place or stay while you're out of sight when you're yakking and doing all those things that you're going to do when you really and truly are using this for real life. Again, I cannot say this enough. A dog will only be reliable in its performance of any command if it's only been trained under the very conditions in which you're asking for that reliability. So be normal. Get over there, get the banging on stuff. Yeah, hey buddy, how you doing? You want another drink? Yeah, I got one coming for you. Yeah, man, oh geez, I dropped the pot. I did all sorts of things. It's okay for Captain to stand up on that cot, look around the corner and go, are you okay? Or, or just go, I think something's okay back there. I didn't hear any alarm. I didn't hear your fire alarms go off. No guns going off. Yeah, it's part of the learning process. We, we do stuff when we're away from you. So make sure you do that. Another thing, timing. Timing. Another reason why I don't want you to go too far, I told you earlier I was going to cover this, is because if he gets off, I tell him place and stay, and I go around this corner and he hops off of that, then I want to be able to mark that behavior quickly and go, no, bad dog, fooey, how dare you, I thought you were smarter than that, all that stuff. You want to mark the behavior. You want to let the animal know very quickly, typically within a few seconds, that, hey, man, that was a mistake, just so you know. I know you're not used to me going out of your sight. I know you dig dear old Brian here. I dig you too. But you can't get off the cot when I go out of sight. And they're not going to know that until they make a few mistakes. So adopt a policy. Wrong is good. I hope you get off that cot. I just need to be in a position to correct that behavior within a few seconds so that there's a higher likelihood that you will associate that mistake with that correction. And now you start to tell yourself as a dog, okay. I think I'm starting to get something here. So I noticed that when Brian goes out of sight and I step off this, I still get corrected just like I do when he's in sight. Yeah, <laughs> smart dog you are. 
It's exactly what happens. Keep in mind, I've gone over this in previous videos, the speed lies within the correction. The speed does not lie in getting the place to happen again or to stay. So if, let's say, for example, captain got all the way off of this cot. I would go, eh, buoy, bad dog, whatever. And as soon as I've done that within those few seconds, that's the requirement for the proper association. Well, that place, that stay is over. It's done. Big racer. Keep that in your head. So now I'm going to go restart a new place or restart a new stay, and I'm going to do it the right way. I mean, I'm going to walk over there, point to that cot, say place, give me a big sweeping stay. If I'm going to give a treat, I'm going to give that first, let the dog ingest it, then give me a big sweeping stay, and then I'm going to walk away. I'm going to do everything right. I'm not going to get in this real hurry, all these convoluted procedures, convoluted signals. Oh, heck no. There's no speed in getting you back on there. The speed comes in the correction. The speed is in the correction, so make sure you do that. All right, and then lastly, hey guys, if you feel like your dog may possibly have an SBA, a secure base attachment, those are very normal for young dogs, very normal for young people. That's how Mother Nature kept our little animals and our little humans. Remember, I tell you, smart mammals learn through free exploration, free exploration and mimicry. Well, when I'm not doing mimicry, meaning I'm right near you and watching you and doing what you do, I go explore. And Mother Nature says, you know, at some point you got a lot of locomotion, you got good vision, you got a good sense of smell, but you don't have any common sense. So I need you to kind of hang out near Mama over here because you go wandering too far away in that free exploration thing, and you could end up being someone's dinner. So she put this natural clinginess, clingy, clingy, clingy. And that's fine when you're young, but when you're old enough to kind of take care of yourself, you halfway know what you're doing, got some half sense in your head, well then, it's time for the SBA to start going away. Oh, we don't want any clingy 20-year-olds, clingy 22-year-olds. No, I prefer to have the one that says, hey, I want to go to the mall. Can you just drop me off in the back 40? And I'll just walk the rest of the way to that front door. That's okay with me. That works for me. That means you got some independence. means you're ready to survive the world by yourself. Okay, guys, those are all the reasons why. Just make sure you do it all properly. I'm going to get Captain off here real quick. Free. So just quick review. Take your dog to the cot. Please. Atta boy. I'm going to give him a little treat. He's been a good dog, so give me just a second here. It's Labor Day. Where are you going, huh? You're not at work? Sorry, buddy. Those are a little tough. They're a little stale, aren't they? Stay. Take my long line with me. Why do I have my long line? Because I want to know when he's leaving. And number two, I want to also make sure I got safety. He's not going anywhere. I don't allow big mistakes, and neither are you. That's why we're starting off with this little corner. You can go out of sight, but keep talking to somebody. Keep banging on the wall. Keep doing things over here. Stay busy. You can also be quiet every now and then, so the dog gets used to the fact that you do go out of sight, and you are quiet. But just make sure you have a nice balance of the two. And then when it's all over, you've done everything, you return back to your dog properly. Use the compound signal, return to the dog, give me a little tension on that leash. If the dog doesn't have on a leash, grab the collar, doesn't have a collar, <clears throat> just give a, just grab the dog. And then tell him, free, out of boy, good boy. Pour on that praise. Start a little bit at a time, duration-wise, only for about a minute or two out of sight. Build it to 20 minutes out of sight, and then build it to what you really think that you're going to use. There's no need in having a two-hour out of sight if you're never going to have a two-hour out of sight. Yeah, I've learned that if a dog can hold place and stay while you're out of sight for 10 minutes, they can do it for two hours because they learn something really important. Don't leave the cot. Yeah, once you learn that, duration builds itself. Okay, so I hope that helps. Hope it helps my viewer. Pay attention to that. Rewind, pause, do whatever you need to do. But I'm telling you what, start. Do exactly what I told you to do. This thing will grow, and it will grow in no time. And you will finally have the place and stay that you can use for many situations. You will not always have to remain inside of your dog. I promise you that. Back to the side of my dog. Where'd my dog go? There you are, cow dog. Hey, buddy. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll check in with you tomorrow. Be safe out there. Get a little bit of rest. Lower that stress response. Love you.